blessings. Before we um, start, maybe just uh, bow our heads. I would like us to just think about what we would like the Lord to do in our lives. Some of us have got all sorts of things going on, concerns, worries. We need like maybe a breakthrough in our lives. We need God to do something. We need God to touch somebody. We want to see people saved. We may have loved ones who are not saved. And we want to see them in Christ. So let's just pray for them in your heart now. Pray for people that you know who are unwell. It might be yourself. Just pray now. Just spend a minute praying. Lifting them up before the Lord. Bringing our worries and our concerns to the Lord. Bringing our pleas and our petitions interceding, standing in the gap of people. You might be involved in a charity, you might be heading up a charity, you might be paying into charities. Pray for the work that is going on, the volunteers, the effort. We want to see God move in our land, we want to see God move in the world. We want to see his kingdom come and spread we want to see people set free free from their shackles free from sin we pray for the churches that there will be a church standing on God's word standing against the culture that opposes God's word. Lord, we want to welcome your presence, your spirit among us. As we sung earlier, Lord, we want you to fill us with your spirit. Fill us, Lord. Fill us. Some of us are half full, half empty. Lord, we want to be full, overflowing with your spirit, Lord. That we will be powerful, that we will move in your power. And we will be bold and courageous, empowered by your spirit. Some of us here may be very afraid, very anxious. Scared to stand, scared to clap, scared to put your hands in the air. Lord, I've come against fear. Lord, remove fear among us. Lord, may we be bold, unashamed of the gospel. Lord, speak into our lives now, I pray. Speak into our hearts now, Lord. May our hearts be yearning for you, Lord Jesus. Bring back that thirst in us. That zeal in us. Bring it back, Lord. Lord, may we live to give you glory in all that we do. May it glorify your name. In all that we do, may it bring you praise. Lord, I'm reminded that you said that we are to be holy because why? You are holy. Lord, may we live in holiness. May we walk in holiness. As a church, may we be about holiness. Lord, may we not be divided. Bring unity among us. Bring your peace among us. Your perfect peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, that transcends all our understanding. Lord, may your peace guard and rule our hearts and our minds. Satan attacks our minds. Satan attacks our thoughts, which in turn affects our behavior. Lord, we take every thought captive and we bring it into subjection that it will be obedient to you, Lord. Lord, touch our minds, protect our minds. May we not listen to lies, lies of the adversary, lies from the world. Lord, may we just stand on your word May we just stand, Lord, on your word. Your word is truth, Lord. Your word is life. 
That is what we need to read. That's what we need to study. That is what we need to meditate upon day and night. That's what we need to delight in. Lord, fill us. Fill us anew. Fill us anew, Lord. May we go away transformed. May we go away this morning challenged. Speak into our lives now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So last year we spent some time exploring two biblical doctrines. Everyone say doctrine. What is doctrine, everybody? Last year we looked at two biblical doctrines. What is doctrine? Shout it out, anyone? Teaching. Message. Instruction. Principle. Lesson. Thank you. That would do. <laughs> that would do. That's what it is. Instruction, it's teaching. It's a set of beliefs. Where should we get our set of beliefs from? Only one of you knows that. Where should we get our set of beliefs from? God's word. Amen. If you want to know anything about God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, heaven, hell, death, angels, whatever it is, Get your set of beliefs from God's word. That's what we call sound doctrine. Amen? We want our doctrine to be what? Sound. Sound doctrine. Please go to the next slide. <coughs> so last year we looked at the doctrine of God. Everyone say the doctrine of God. Amen. That's what we looked at. And these are characteristics, these are attributes that we actually explored last year. God's existence, his knowability, we can know God. His self-existence, his unchangeableness, we say he's the same yesterday, today and forever. God is spirit. God is invisible. That might sound obvious that God is spirit, that he's invisible, but that's very, very important that God is invisible. It means you cannot compare him to anything that has been created. Amen? God is love. Do you believe that? Yes. God's goodness, we spoke about. God's holiness, God's mercy, God's peace. Righteousness and justice. God's wrath. If God is righteous and just, then there is wrath too. Then we spoke about God's glory. So that was last year. And then, next slide, please. We also last year looked at the doctrine of man, the doctrine of humanity or humankind. And we looked at three things here. We looked at the, cre the creation of man and the nature of man. We looked at the fall of man, Genesis chapter 3. And we looked at the purpose of man. Everyone say purpose. Okay, but one thing we did not cover actually was the redemption of man. The redemption, the salvation of man. But we looked at those two doctrines last year. Now this brings me to another doctrine that I think we should look at. I think it's fitting for us to look at this particular doctrine. We've just celebrated uh, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We're drawing closer to Pentecost Sunday. So what doctrine do you think we should look at as we draw closer to Pentecost? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you, yes. So I think it's good to have a right understanding of the Holy Spirit. I think it's essential. So for the forthcoming weeks, we'll explore the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Are you excited about that, church? Some of you don't look too excited. Maybe it's the time that it is now. Okay, so please, in your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 5. What is the Holy Spirit and who is the Holy Spirit? That's what we're looking at. Turn to Acts chapter 5. And if you have an NIV, Church Bible, it's page 1096. If you have it, shout Amen. So what is the Holy Spirit and who is the Holy Spirit? Acts chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. 
Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And fear, great fear, seized all who heard what happened. And as you read on, church, you will see that Sapphira herself was questioned by Peter. She also lied. And what happened to her? She dropped down dead too. So you don't mess with the Holy Spirit, right? Okay. No, none of us want to be dropping down dead for lying to the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in chapter 4, ending of chapter 4 of Acts, chap, Acts, of Acts chapter 4, just the ending part, we read that all the believers, this is after the resurrection, they were all in one heart and mind. And they all shared their possessions, which is really nice. The money that they made from land and property that they sold was shared among everyone. So nobody had nothing. That's really good, isn't it? Everybody was looked after. Everybody was taken care of. If you had land, if you had property, you sold it. And the money was shared among everybody. Nobody had nothing. And that was the arrangement. That was the God-given arrangement. That was the arrangement. But after Ananias sold his land, he kept some of the money for himself. And his wife was in on this as well. The blind leading the blind. Now let's get back to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has often been misunderstood as a force. Everyone say force. The Holy Spirit has been misunderstood as a sort of power or some sort of energy. But it's wrong. That's not the right biblical way of looking at the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has often been described as an it. Everyone say it. But no, the Holy Spirit is not some kind of force, not some kind of power, not some kind of energy. And the Holy Spirit is not an it. It's a he, thank you. In verse 3, Peter says to Ananias, you have lied to the Holy Spirit. One does not and cannot lie to an it, right? You cannot lie to an it, deceive an it. You lie to a person. Amen? The Holy Spirit is a person, not an it. Now, some of us have had that way of thinking. I am sure have had that way of thinking at, at times. The Holy Spirit is an it. But no, it is a person. So let's put that in our minds now. Whatever we've thought about the Holy Spirit before, now let's reprogram our minds to think and understand that the Holy Spirit is a person. That's what I would like you to understand this morning. A person that can be lied to. A person that can be dishonoured. A person that can be ignored. A person that can be grieved. Yes? You can ignore the Holy Spirit, lie to the Holy Spirit, ignore the Holy Spirit, grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has emotions. Amen? The Holy Spirit has emotions. Let's switch the mic. Thank you. Thanks. So the Holy Spirit has emotions. The Holy Spirit is 
a person. Now, if you will, please turn in your Bibles to John chapter 16. Are we back? John chapter 16, if you have it, shout amen. Just looking at verses 13 and 14. John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Page 1084. Jesus speaking to his disciples, he says this, and John Paul's already alluded to this. But when he... The spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is for me that he will receive what he will make known to you. I think that's very clear, isn't it? How many he's was in that? (laughs) We have seen that the Holy Spirit is a person. Amen? And when we look at the personhood of the Holy Spirit, we can also clearly see that the Holy Spirit is a he. Thank you. We have person and we have a he. Yes. So we have masculine pronouns that are used in the Bible to describe the Holy Spirit. Masculine pronouns. Now, the the Apostle Paul refers to the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 1 as who? So that's going back to, again, the personhood of the Holy Spirit. The person is a who, it's an individual. The Holy Spirit is a who, it's a person. The Holy Spirit is a he. So what we are talking about now in terms of biblical doctrine is the personhood. Everyone say personhood of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Now let's look at another aspect of the Holy Spirit. So we have person, we have he. Think of those things when you think of the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at another aspect. Going back to uh, verse 4 of chapter 5. Please turn back to chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, verse 4, 1096. What does Peter say to Ananias? Verse 5, sorry, verse 4. Anybody? At the ending part of verse 4, you have not lied just to human beings, but to who? To God. So the Holy Spirit is God. We're building our doctrine, right? We're trying to get the right set of beliefs regarding the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a person. Holy Spirit is a he. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not an it, but a person. It's a he. And the Holy Spirit is not just any person, and the Holy Spirit is not just any he. The Holy Spirit is God. When Ananias lied to the Holy Spirit, he was lying to God. Now I want you to think about that for a moment. How often do we think that we are lying sometimes to the Holy Spirit? We often know when we have lied to God. Do we, have to, do we often think that we are lying to the Holy Spirit? Does that come into our minds? I've lied to the Holy Spirit. So consider that when you lie, who you are lying to. Holy Spirit is God. Please go to the next slide. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. The Apostle Paul speaks and says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? And that God's spirit dwells in your midst. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred. And you together are that temple. 
Amen to that, yes. We, we see here in these two verses that God and the Holy Spirit are used interchangeably. God and the Holy Spirit are being used mutually in place of each other. And this is further evidence of the Holy Spirit's deity. Everyone say deity. The Holy Spirit is divine, amen? The Holy Spirit is a divine person. The Holy Spirit is God. And the Bible uses the phrases interchangeably often. So we are now talking about the deity of the Holy Spirit. We spoke about the personhood of the Holy Spirit. Now it's about the deity of the Holy Spirit. So let me ask the question, should we worship the Holy Spirit? How many thinks we should and shouldn't? Who, okay, who thinks we shouldn't? No, no one's going to put their hands up. <laughs> okay, yes, we should worship the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's God, simple. God receives our worship, the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit is divine. We can worship the Holy Spirit. So this is what we're doing, we're building our doctrine. So see the logic. Another evidence of the Holy Spirit is that it is deity. Please turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians. Another evidence of the Holy Spirit as deity, as divine. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to read this together. And it's verse 14. We'll come to that. Second Corinthians, chapter 13. We're now looking at verse 14. Let's read that together. I'm sure this is very familiar to us as a church, I hope. Let's read it together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I hope some of you are thinking, ah, oh, that's where we get it from. <laughs> that's the benediction that I keep seeing on the screen. And I reworded it so that it actually says what it says here. So when we say at the end, please take note. This is what we call the benediction. It's Paul's farewell to the church in Corinth. It's his goodbyes. His blessing to them. What do we see here? Go to the next slide. We see the Trinity being displayed. God triune, right? We see the, the Jesus Christ, we see the love of God, we see the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We have a triune God. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. Do you believe that? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Spirit. How many gods? Are you sure? Are you positive? Because some people think we serve three gods. Some religions believe that we are gone crazy and that we worship three gods. No, we worship one God existing in three co-equal persons. One being, three persons. One being, three persons. And we need to get this doctrine correct because people will pull us up on it and challenge you on it. And some of us may not be able to articulate very well the Trinity. It's one being, three persons. And I know that's a bit, a lot for us to get our minds around because we always think of three individual things all the time. One plus one plus one equals three. But it's one being, three co-equal persons and we are to go and make disciples aren't we and baptize people in the name of the father of the son of the holy spirit the fact that the holy spirit is associated with the father and the son shows it's on an equal basis it shows it's on an equal basis it's proof of the spirit's deity everyone say deity Holy Spirit is divine. Holy Spirit is divine. I want you to note this as well. One thing about the Trinity. They are equal in divinity and equal in nature. But yet they have distinct roles. I think that's very important to understand about the Trinity. Equal 
in nature, equal in their divinity, but yet have distinct roles. The Trinity sets the benchmark for so many things. It sets the ben benchmark for how we are to love. God is love, amen? But how does he love if there's no one to love? Well, okay, he loves human beings, but before human beings were created, who was God loving? And that is answered in the Trinity. That is answered in the Trinity. God loves the Son, God loves the Spirit. The Son, God sends the Son, and the Son sends the Holy Spirit. Don't you think that's amazing? But yet the Son submits to the Father. Equal in divinity, equal in nature, but yet distinct roles. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, The Spirit searches the deep things of God and knows the thoughts of God. That's the Spirit. Searches the deep things of God and knows the thoughts of God. The Holy Spirit is all-knowing. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 calls him the eternal Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been there from the beginning it's eternal. It is eternal. So there you have it for this morning. That's my brief sermon. Looking at the personhood of the Holy Spirit. Looking at the deity of the Holy Spirit. And we are to remember to build sound doctrine. Get our doctrine from God's word. Don't make things up. Don't listen to anybody. But get your doctrine from God's word. Sometimes we make things up, we add things that are not there in God's word. Just go by what God's word says. If it doesn't say it, then don't add to it. Just leave it. Let's build on our sound doctrine as a church. May we continually be filled with God's spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit is also called God's spirit. Let us be filled with God's spirit. Let us be led every single day by God's Spirit as a church. Amen? Every single day, all through the week, be led by God's Spirit. Ask yourself, is this God telling me to do this? Or is this my own flesh? Is it God's will or is it just me wanting to do something, wanting to prove something, wanting this, wanting that? Is it God saying this? And then that is backed up by God's Word. God will never tell you to do something contrary to to his word. Amen? So when you hear something you think is God, back it up with, God, with scripture. Back it up with scripture. Because so many people think they hear from God. A lot of religions and cults have been, uh, have been created from people saying they heard from God. Back it up with scripture. Back it up with God's word. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. And also let us be humbled by God's Spirit. Big thing here is to, be, is to submit to God's Spirit. One of the issues I think Christians have is that we do not submit to God's Word. We read it, we kind of believe it, but we don't actually go under it. And you're supposed to submit yourself to God's Word. And actually, that's, quite very, that's very painful. That will challenge you. That will really challenge you. It might even go against what you've always believed or thought. Submit yourself under God's word. And so there we have it. May you be led, humbled and filled by God's spirit. May the church say amen. Amen. I'm going to now hand over to Elizabeth, who's going to lead us the Lord's Supper.